Well, I had a lot of problems yesterday, but I managed to save laptop. It looked like they set me up the laptop for help. Uh, based on MK Ultra, it did happen so that they fixed the laptop so that the laptop would simply destroy hard drive and uh, battery itself. The whole thing they have done in a, such a diabolical thing way <coughs> that is fucking incredible. I'm gonna give the separate video, but now the situation is being taken care of. Uh, what precisely I mean is that you're gonna have the video next. I'm gonna put this video on it, diabolical stuff. What it would do is it would just drag the hard drive. Uh, every time when I would turn the hard drive on, it would drag one slowly. Uh, insufficient supply of the current to the hard drive, to the laptop. It's a laptop, and it's battery powered. Uh, the SSD drive was overwhelmed and would display blue screen like whatever screen you would set as a background for quite long before it would uh, turn itself on properly and have accomplished this kind of crime through what they demonstrated me during MK Ultra. They didn't say anything about but the goal about destroying me hard drive. They talked about how the hard drive is going to fail very soon and no hard drive and stuff like that. Um, but the way they did this stuff maliciously is through what they developed a new way to fuck uh, this type of computers. This is a computers with a with a keyboard lights on, uh, like Elite Books, Hewlett Packards. That to degree it was a new problem that started to pop up. That the owner of this computer even, and this is a really wealthy guy uh, started to bitch complain about it uh, with them having a capacity they developed even to uh, demonstrate how a computer is uh, constantly on certain level of uh, current uh, percentage I should say battery percentage like it will indicate you like 99% charged but it's not charging and it will drop down to 97 but it's not charging it's plugged in but it's not charging and it would you would drop to uh, if you will not immediately charge it will drop to uh, 90% and it will indicate you that your laptop is plugged in and it's not charging uh, it looks something like this here. It's satanical. I mean, totally, totally diabolical stuff. I mean, I have to excuse for the two days that I lost because of this shit. And I could end up even losing a new hard drive, end up losing a battery, laptop, the whole thing would go to the hell. This is yet maybe the most satanical one that involved... Unfortunately, I also involved French and Germans and British in the Slovenian side, which argued about whether this Elite Book 820 is a good laptop or bad laptop. And in the middle of this clusterfuck, they came up with all kinds of propositions on how to also destroy me stuff. Next to the theft with the Slovenian side. They wanted to ar through the arguments they did this stuff. I'm gonna have a separate video which is like the best video ever to demonstrate what kind of satanism this is. Demonstrate you. So this is an issue known as a plugged in. But not charging. It's a plugged in but it's not charging. And what this shit will do to you is it will just lower and lower and lower the battery and you will not realize this shit 
until I actually gets to the such a degree I was told in MK Ultra and terrorized with this issue. That's exactly the laptop they have used to agonize, terrorize with for about at least ten years during MK Ultra on how the whole thing the whole computer is gonna fall apart and there will be nothing you can do about and so on. Insane stuff, insane really satanistic stuff. And then you have again people that were involved in MK Ultra pointing out the solution on how to uh, actually uh, reset uh, on how to actually reset how to discharge whatever uh, current uh, from the laptop nobody says before the whole thing go to fucking hell yeah uh, I spent the whole fucking day from the morning and night working on the laptop and save one but this is not the video about the laptop it's going to be the next video I'm going to dedicate about what went on uh, this is a video about what's happening on a on a world stage uh, I mentioned Macron about this issue uh, all this French politician Francois Hollande uh, unfortunately the politicians who are involved in this stuff are now involved in a lot of other issues that seems to me are just really not pointing out clearly where the whole thing is going it's, it's catastrophe. It, it is catastrophic uh, Emmanuel Macron pointed me out that uh, he cried at this stage you know when it comes to Ukraine he cried at this stage that uh, that I should read the news about how France uh, will support Ukraine for as long as it's necessary and this and that, you know. Uh, where is this news here? This is what was during MK Ultra. You need to read the news. You need to read the news. You need to read the news. Uh, well, uh, is, uh, there is a news and then there is some completely other stuff that I am made out of. I have seen these people, I have met these people, and I have my own idea about, I have created myself about these people, about all these things. And I have seen all this, and I have seen more than that. I have met all kinds of sites, and behind the curtain stuff, and so on and so forth. Basically, what, I, what I'm going to say to you about the situation, the situation is catastrophical in Ukraine, for Ukraine. Uh, Putin is dropping over 3,000 bombs per month it's called FAB bombs F-A-B bombs some of which now even weigh 3,000 kilos uh, they are so heavy these bombs that even the fighter jets that carry them can only take off with the two bombs I understand uh, this is like a mini nukes is using and it's devastating Ukraine with what, what what I see here is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, with 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 Ukraine having practically no air support, nothing that would guarantee takedown of these planes, uh, demolition of the enemy positions, uh, counter attack, destruction of the Russian forces anywhere. Nothing. We don't see nothing. We're talking about defense. We're talking about how. The Ukrainian troops are going to be allowed to participate in a training in France. Uh, how we're we're watch about the fight uh, for the Ukrainian fighter pilots, fighter jet pilots uh, being allowed to train in the U.S. and stuff like this. This is bizarre. It's nowhere near any uh, expectations one would have and they're taking a hard toll I mean the people in Ukraine are fucking dying like fleas uh, those that go on the front line are being fucking decimated man with this kind of bombs that they are dumping down and doing damage like this this is wow I mean this must be hard to be on a front line I mean this is like fucking brutal um, well it's like this um, what exactly is going on with this French politic about what's actually happening here with this stuff here? 
uh, the French politics decayed into a chaos a uh, long time ago you know a uh, long time ago they they had uh, they had a lot of problems with uh, a politic because uh, it's all kinds of fractions in France and uh, it's not it's not an easy country to uh, to even hold together because of so many differences they have uh, and so many concerns so many issues they face uh, criticized all over the place attacked from all the sides there is uh, it's really it's really a country that is that is um, a challenge for the politicians uh, but this challenge became a challenge when French simply uh, you know they have chosen to a follow a pattern of self-destruction now what I think is a self-destruction nothing comes better to me to my mind than uh, Francois Hollande you know Francois Hollande Francois Hollande this guy here this is this is this is this is a man that you know this is a you, you want to be, to be a, a socialist what does he list himself as? You know, let me see this stuff here. Yeah, socialists. Uh, he wanted to be a socialist. It doesn't matter because I met all this in 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 the first hand during MK. He, he wanted to be a socialist, and uh, uh, he he would be he wanted to be a socialist, and uh, he wanted to be. Um, how can I say? This is the guy that will go out there and he's going to say, yeah, you can do anything you want, just fucking leave me alone. You know, just let me be. Just let me be up there. Let me be a president and uh, you can do anything you want. You know, vive le anarchy, basically. This is what this is. This is not a socialist and this is not a capitalist and he's not a communist and he is not, he's a fuckwind. Yeah, be better. Uh, that's basically whichever way the wind blows is where this is heading. That's what this is. And this syndrome of uh, incapacity to handle this world of internal affairs placed France at stake as a state, as a nation. Uh, placed one literally at, you know, when you have certain politic happening, uh, without giving one a chance you cannot make it happen that's one thing and even worse when you have something happening and you have people inside that are uh, insane that are jealous or envious of, of your success and when you start to succeed and you're going to have this pe people like this fucking throwing themselves uh, you know right in front of you uh, it, will, it will fuck you up it will destroy you it will eat you from within and this is a story about the France it's it's like a story of infinity uh, micro wars uh, wars all kinds of disagreements within and a total clusterfuck uh, jam jamming itself uh, sabotaging itself uh, with these people in Paris uh, that are totally out of touch with reality I mean they are totally out of touch with reality these people are like I mean you know if they don't kill somebody every day in, in Paris, you know, if they don't lynch somebody every day or burn few cars on a daily basis, they're just not healthy. I mean, I think it's like, you know, it's like it's like a way of life in France. You know, it's not only in Paris, but the syndrome already took now to other cities throughout the France, and it's 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 just, uh, you know, maybe maybe this guy should really return because he was a syndrome of this stuff he was the one he was the father of this type of stuff he he just uh he just uh 
he took he took away a you know right moment leaving uh, to Macron Macron was his student he was his uh, relentless student um, who uh, Macron Macron is very open to uh, different ideas to different concepts uh, and um, you know um, in, within this uh, society you know he is um, he's just uh, he's like little bit here little bit left little bit right little bit there little bit here little bit that you know come see come saw you know and uh, you know the thing is that uh, you can't have it like this you know you have to know basically you have to know the ABC you have to know your ABC yeah it's not enough that you know for all the politicians what they're all about and it's not enough that you are scared you have to make up some uh, some decisions that uh, other politicians have to feel for yeah what I'm trying to say is you have to make to feel them for if they don't if they don't uh, if you cannot make them feel for then you have to get rid of them it is simple as this and in particular what I have in my mind is the politicians that shouldn't even be anymore on a political stage you're talking about what they refer to as a far right you're talking about the Marine Le Pen uh, it's a far right and this and that it's not only Marine Le Pen you know you have another spectrum of the Marine Le Pen which is called uh, a communist, a socialist, whatever it's basically people like this guy here Francois Hollande that are exactly doing the same thing they're not having fucking different I mean Francois Hollande let me see this stuff here if he ever even made it to Ukraine let me see this here Did he made it what his position is about Ukraine? That's one thing I have not seen that stuff. Macronism is over, unpopular, trying to run for parliament again. Love scooter fetch, 20,000 auction. Uh, <clears throat> and he is breaking friends. He is the best. He is, yeah, he is breaking friends. He's the best at destroying France. I think his goal is this is is exactly is there is no goal I mean I was gonna say his goal is to destroy France no 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 I, I must not be so evil he doesn't have any fucking goal his goal is to collect the money and have a good time and basically fuck you this is his goal his goal is fuck you man uh, he his goal you know what his goal is his goal is that tomorrow are going to burn 20 cars or 30 cars or they're going to lynch somebody over there and what he's going to do is he's going to go and his goal is to hijack somebody like myself there is no myself but hijack me and appear in the neighborhood with where they have this uh, in a rough neighborhoods let's say and start to negotiate with them saying to them well you know um, we heard that you burn I don't know two three hundred cars and you have a really good record of burning cars you know and so what we would do you know we would not like this stuff uh, we brought you this guy here you want to kill him you can do this we're gonna borrow you him and you can instead you can disperse your anger on him for a few days we're gonna lease you this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna allocate to your neighborhood certain money and everything is fine you know this is this is Francois Hollande this is how he held France together I'm afraid he was not the only one except that in the United States of America and in Hungary and on other locations the politicians were collecting the points they were just collecting the points uh, Victor Orban who was doing the same thing what he was doing with the Roma community is he was just making himself more prominent more you know more more present what Joe Biden was doing in the United States of America using this exact system is he was just uh, totally different from the French he was just going out there and he was feeding 
the anger, he was feeling the rage, he was feeling something that uh, tomorrow well could be completely, completely crashed and it could lead into from totally other spectrum of people, white people, into total revolt, like in a total, total racial war. Those are totally different issues because every country had different issues. But when it comes to France, that's exactly what I described. And although it might look the same thing, it's there. These are totally two different issues. Totally two different things. There's different ways. However, those ways apply to the different systems. Uh, in U.S., you can have a national guard, a police dispatched out. Uh, you can have a martial law declared so quickly that that you won't even understand what happened at a certain moment. I'm not saying that this is not impossible in the France. I'm not saying that this is the way it should be in the France. Uh, I'm just saying that this isn't going to do anything good to France because France is multi-ethnic, it's multinational country and as such, especially due to past relationship to the colonies, uh, must strive forward to uh, humane relationship as much as possible humane relationship, however, hold the country on a certain clean principles together. It's France is more than France. Uh, some people said it's an idea. Uh, no, it's not the idea. France is a nation. It's a people. Uh, and But the thing is that uh, you got to have a principles. You got to have a certain core, you got to have something, you got to have some kind of common belief to qualify my opinion as a French. If you don't, then you are just uh, well, Francois Hollande, that's what you are, in my opinion. No, I'm not French, and French know it better, but this is a trouble. It's a trouble when you have two spectrums of people uh, finding the same interests. Uh, you have this extreme left, extreme. Uh, you call them a communist. You can call them. Uh, you can call them a leftist. You can call them whatever you want. Uh, to me personally, uh, they look like anarchists. They support Vladimir Putin. Uh, they support war on the Europe. They support uh, war on everything that is out there, French. Uh, and you have uh, Marine Le Pen, uh, who is uh, doing exactly the same thing. She also affiliates herself with, uh, with Putin. Uh, she would also prefer to trade uh, Ukraine for some... Uh, maybe uh, favor in some other part of the world maybe uh, you know what I mean you get me uh, and then you have ladies uh, I understand that started to protest against the the, uh, the extreme right national rally black members uh, you have you have black members in there you have Arabic members you have Asian members you have Russian members in the in the France Nationale of the Marine Le Pen you have uh, anything you fucking want this is not the point I would be happy to have them the point is they support Putin I mean this is the so-called white power party that attracts people from all walks of life for the reason of supporting Vladimir Putin is war on Europe and accent the the existence of the far right Marine Le Pen well first of all it's prohibited by the law to have a Nazi party that's one thing that does nothing good to France for one thing 
uh, it misrepresents one. There is no such thing like a Nazi party anywhere in the world. I don't know for a single fucking Nazi party that will be in the world. Because it's illegal. Because the only Nazi party that exists is the one that doesn't exist on a surface. If there is such thing. Other than that, this is a camouflage that mainly it's a, either police that are running this kind of show or it's a, it's a, it's a total, total anarchism. The, the far right, the far left in France, uh, the, the, the so-called Nazis and the communists, this is one thing. I don't know if there's like a difference between the two, but they're doing a hell of a damage to everybody. They're causing harm, not only to France, but entire Europe. Uh, Putin is happy to have both spectrums, both walks of life, uh, together, as, uh, as contradictory, as controversial this stuff might be, it's not. It's a symbiosis. They, they work together. It's it, it's like, like, you know, tomorrow when you're going to wake up, you're going to wake up to the French bagel and to the few more crusty cars. You know? Now, you will smell a car paint tomorrow and maybe even a human, more human flesh, basically. That's all there is to it with these elections in France. Uh, so what exactly is the France hopes for now I don't know maybe that they're going to trade no no the France does not uh, Francois Hollande maybe does uh, maybe they hope they will kill some people in Thailand that they're gonna execute some people in Thailand uh, and during this killings during these executions uh, they will deliver meat to Thailand where they will the same like on the streets of France uh, communicate with the Chinese side which you know are probably gonna sit somewhere in a chair and watch how they shoot people take their organs uh, and next to me is going to be Francois Hollande and he's going to be asking uh, a Chinese side if they want to borrow me a little bit uh, and instead stop killing uh, the Thailandese people this is what certain fraction in France hopes for so you know I don't I don't kind of see myself in this stuff I don't I don't see like I don't see the connection here between the France and you know therefore I should say reality and uh, whatever uh, is happening in France today no it's not Thailand it's Taiwan sorry Taiwan they said they said Thailand or Taiwan uh, Taiwan, sorry, Taiwan. Uh, it's going to be Van der Fool, you know. It's going to be Van der Fool. You go to to the. To the it's going to be we, we, we get a hold of it to the, the the Taiwan and boom boom. And what we do is we do we, we you know if you are uh, uh, Taiwanese, you know, don't even think about think, because when we come, we fucking lynch you, man. It's going to be boom 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 boom. You know, we we can't wait, man, to fucking lynch you. And you know, Mr. Francois Hollande, you know, your uh, your ideas, you know, I think that uh, you know French French voters should should be aware of them. I think that you hit the the wall here. Uh, I'm saying this because Macron is not man enough. Macron is just a president that is a president is very intelligent this is a very strong uh, small guy very small guy like Napoleon uh, but is stronger I think than Napoleon he is a gymnastic and uh, he's very very alive but the thing is that uh, you know 
with the politicians a problem because they always waving what is more comfortable what is more convenient what is more uh, you know yeah, trusted what is more likely what is more uh, yeah but at this point in time we have the situation that uh, suggests that uh, uh, China is out there for a butchery they're not there for you know for Francois Hollande uh, dream uh, you know they are out there for something that is concerning entire Europe this is not the time for the Francois Hollande if ever was there never was any time really for him um, he, he made it he made it in the power I don't know how like I explained already earlier because you know it's just a politics that took over is just they try to portray France uh, as something completely contrary to uh, to its past you know uh, and they portray the French past if you go to the if you look at if you go if you go and you google this stuff here and you go French colonialism, a genocide, and this and that. And you Google this stuff, and and it's here uh, closure of the French colonial crimes. You know how many people died under the French colonialism, and uh, five hundred thousand to one million it was a terrible. You know atrocities. You know what are the atrocities of the French in the Africa? You know France. Uh, France, this, this, you know, French, you know, French, uh, uh, it's a, well, the reality is that French was nowhere even near as bad as German or Belgian, even Belgian, you know, or uh, <laughs> nothing really compares with the British. I mean, French are confused people about their history they are very very confused people uh, about their history and about their, their identity uh, and they are confused so because because of the politicians they have in this Paris it's like this is like a very very crazy place I mean this is a very very crazy this is a very very vibrant place which is a good thing uh, but on the other hand, it's like it's it's, it's a place that I, I feel like they're like like every day is a good day for new revolution. It's like a revolution became like a like a like a fashion, like a fashion. It's like uh, yeah, we uh, we need another Pancho Villa, man. We need to burn somebody, man. We need to put some car on fire. You know, you know what? Uh, at the local pub. Uh, uh, I decided we should do this and it's like oh yes why because today is a happy Friday let's go and we're gonna you know trash somebody something you know like yeah maybe maybe even a little bit goes back in time in a culture maybe but but it, it, things get more chronic it got worse over the course of the time it's get the things are getting worse. They get worse and worse. You know, if you look at the, if you look at the globe, you know, when it comes to this French colonialism, you know, and we we were gonna start with the Paris. If I'll be fortunate enough to to get this map, if we look at the globe like this. Is it going to give me? No, it's not going to give me this thing, the whole thing. I don't know how to get this done. Let me see this here. Google Maps? No? Ah, shit. Not lucky enough. You know, if you look at the globe, and you go to Australia, you know where it says Oceania? Australia and down here? Down under. They call it down under. That's New Zealand. And, you know, you go down, you go up here. You go to Canada. Je me suis Canada. Is that to need in this and that? You know, uh, it was a time back in the day when uh, French also dreamed about uh, they would have their, you know, 
uh, France and this and that, you know. But uh, this is the thing about the French people. They did not do as efficient as the British did. Yeah, the British, the British went out there and just, you know, killed everything. You know, they 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 moved to the U.S., they moved to the to the Canada, and uh, you know, oh, look, voila, and uh, it's an Indian, boom. Uh, the same thing here. Australia, New Zealandia, there's no way, no nobody's gonna be, nobody's gonna revolt against anybody over there because they kill everybody. So they don't have to worry about any kind of revolts, you know what I mean? The French did this a little different. The French brought schools with them. They brought education. Oh, uh, you know, they, you know, uh, oh, bonjour. Uh, where you are now? You're a colony here. Now we're going to make the colony and this and that. And... What they, what they did was, you know, th there is a school, uh, you have to go to the school, uh, yeah, you have to read, to, you have to, you have to learn how to write, you know, learn how to write, you know, we're gonna, you know, you have to, we, you have to collect the money, this and that, and uh, you have to go to the school, but you have to go to the school, you have to educate yourself, you have to go to the factory, you have to go to work, uh, yeah, I mean, this could be a form of torture for the people that were relaxed and, uh, they did not uh, see this as a way of life, but eventually this kind of threat infested this world everywhere. Wherever you would go, the Spaniards did the same thing in Mexico, and uh, the Portuguese did uh, Brazil. So now you have Brazil here, you have uh, they conquested uh, South America, they, they conquested Central America, you know what I mean? And the French conquested nothing. The way the French conquested is, uh, they conquested here in uh, Louisiana, New Orleans. Uh, that's where they mix good with the black people. And uh, here in uh, Canada, Je Monsieur, they also did uh, pretty much the same with the Indian, with the natives. They built a good schools over there and they are guilty for the genocide here, genocide there. Uh, and uh, this is the the French story, colonialism. It's 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 very very different, isn't it? I mean, when you consider these things, it's a very very different form of colonialism, right? I mean, it's it's a bit different. Uh, the black people in Africa were French colonies, were still were, uh, and French are still trying to to create a relationship, they still try to work their way, uh, and they're very, very unsuccessful with it. Uh, Russians are more successful taking those, uh, turning them in their own colonies, and then there is another phenomena that popped up here, it's called China. And they're very efficient, they're doing their stuff, they're doing their business, they're doing their stuff, and uh, the French, the French are helpful. The French are very, very helpful, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's time to burn Europe more. Why would only be Paris? Why would only be Marseille? Why would only be other cities here like Bordeaux and so on? Uh, it's time to it's time to to burn some more. Maybe I don't know. Now I'm not saying the, uh, that uh, Macron is a bad politician because he's not. He knows the stuff I'm talking about. He refused to be my student completely, and that makes him a bad politician. But in a way, he did become a good student, and uh, that made him a good politician. For whatever he learned from me, is a good politician. Is whatever France profited, and other people with the France, for whatever he decided will pay. Uh, maybe even neutral uh, is. Uh, it's a loss. It's a fucking loss, and the loss is going to be bigger. You know, China is a uh, is, is 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 at, a, at the present is in a, in a, is in a in a active war with Ukraine. China at the present is in an active war with Europe, and China at the present is in an active war with the world. 
the Chinese politic is not politic of peace. I'd notice what became evident here in uh, Serbia, where they delivered uh, air missiles, um, uh, raiders, uh, not raiders, uh, French actually saw them as uh, raiders, uh, drones, all kinds of military equipment, really dangerous, and it was in the name of what they claimed was uh, what what the Chinese claimed was bombardment of a Chinese embassy in Belgrade during 1999, which I already explained in my blog, Chinese alone demanded from uh, Americans. In a complete agreement with an Americans, uh, Chinese got their wish fulfilled with Americans dumping a few bombs on uh, or bomb or whatever on a Chinese embassy uh, and it took place when the main Chinese embassy staff was relocated from uh, from uh, they relocated themselves from the embassy to the house next door where they had a uh, where they also rented out it was their house next door uh, supposed to be just down the street and started to create uh, what is known as a kraval, as a, a, a noise, like, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, you bomb our embassy and this and that, when, in fact, Americans made sure that already six months earlier, prior to the bombing of Belgrade, they started a campaign warning all embassy staff in Belgrade to move out of Belgrade because they're going to start bombardment and are not going to be held reliable, uh, uh, responsible for whatever is going to hit even embassies or kill possible uh, staff um, uh, diplomatic staff, foreign diplomatic staff will not be held responsible uh, and Chinese demanded this kind of stuff from Americans uh, to present themselves to the Serbs as somebody that campaigns for the end of the NATO bombing campaign because Serbia launched extermination against uh, Kosovo people, Bosnian people, Croatian people, Slovenian people, China wanted to play uh, a, a major um, supporter of the Serbs by presenting the case of the embassy uh, which took place, it was uh, unjustified, I don't know what uh, once the bombing campaign already would end and that's exactly the way it was and the Chinese rationalized this type of stuff to Bill Clinton with the offer which they extended to Bill Clinton they would cooperate on a future colonialism this is where things get interesting and this is where things end for me you see this here? Taiwan slams China's threat to execute diehard separatists. This is where he ends for me. This I am not interested in having anything to do with it. In today's threat, in today's threat, the world became a dangerous place. The world is a threat to everybody. It can be in the New Caledonia, it can be in New Guinea. It can be anywhere in Africa, it can be in any place around the world that numerous countries now, many countries, many of these forces will come to your country, it will occupy you and will provide security that will be just efficient and sufficient enough for you to pay your tax, to pay your debt, basically, to them. Just like all other colonialist countries, a communist country, China, expressed a hard desire to become part of new colonial system, of new colonial era, and have expressed a deep uh, consent, agreement, and uh, desire to become part of the new 
uh, the new world order through a future Chinese colonies. Everybody involved in this stuff will confirm this stuff. They commended me that this was because of me, that I was the one uh, responsible for it, that I excited China enough that they would even go and become uh, begun colonialism and so on. No, the thing is that uh, I do not support any of that stuff. The thing is that British uh, and even French politicians have abused me to present me uh, to the world in the most negative light. And in a process of doing this stuff, because this is what they created me for, to take no responsibility whatsoever for their crimes. They were going to involve in this stuff also China, and they did. They did employ Chinese successfully with the Chinese presented me also to the world as an ultimate evil. As somebody who is a threat to the world, for everyone involved in this MK Ultra case, we are better off to have just nothing to do with it. This is how Milan Kuchan was created. This was a triumph of Milan Kuchan based upon. This is how these politicians came under, got their space under the sun. Milan Kuchan was the individual who uh, claimed everybody that uh, I am ultimate evil and he only can save Slovenia because of me in front of other people face uh, that I demanded colonialism and I don't know what and this and that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today Russia, which waged active warfare on people of Ukraine and have stolen close to a quarter of Ukraine, is the main colonialist uh, supporter, inciter, promoter, uh, pushing forward to, uh, with their colonialist agenda uh, under uh, a BRICS. It's called the BRICS. It's called the BRICS, it's called the BRICS Association. BRICS, BRICS is a company of Eastern European superpowers uh, intermixed also with the South African, Brazil, uh, major global powers, economies, which they united under this umbrella of uh, like some sort of communism, socialism, justice for it all, yes? This is this is what Russia brand itself, yes. Now how you're gonna say how the China is doing this kind of stuff, how the China can be so guilty about this? What's happening with this stuff here in China? What is where the hell is the China coming from? Well China is number one supportive of the war of the Russian war on Ukraine. China is the number one supportive of colonialism of the new colonialist era. Uh, and it's a different type of colonialism. You know, it's a colonialism that we witness through Africa. Uh, it's a colonialism that uh, they try to more and more enforce against others, to which, believe it or not, I have seen the news here about Malaysia and now Thailand also will also join to BRICS. They also will go to uh, Thailand also. Thailand. Thailand BRICS. You see, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, they all joined to BRICS company. They all joined to the Russia, to the China, and, uh, you know, it's becoming bigger, it's becoming more influential, uh, economically stronger, more potential. Would you believe that is also France, the one who wants to join BRICS? Now, that would actually really knock you out of the on your ass. Now the French uh, do not uh, talk about it, the present. Uh, you see this is the stuff that worries me about Macron. Uh, uh, Mr. Macron. Uh, you know, that's a bad stuff. Mr. Macron, did you have signed agreement with the Chinese? You're a strange kind of colonial dude, sir. Uh, in the middle of the war on France and on Europe as a whole, on, on a global security. You're fucking weird. 
you are Francois Hollande. I mean, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say about a Francois Hollande, but you are Francois Hollande. Don't fucking say. Remember, by the way, your Chinese Xi Jinping with whom you met not too long ago and signed a major, literally as a blow in the face to Ursula von der Leyen, to the Brussels, to a German diplomacy that is doing everything possible to stop the war in Ukraine and with Americans push back one a major agreement with the Xi Jinping economical agreement. You remember that, Macron? Macron, Xi Jinping. So, you know, we have a strange kind of identity crisis developing. We have a strange kind of identity crisis developing (laughs) <laughs> we have a strange, very, very strange kind of crisis developing in Ukraine, in this world, actually. And I'm afraid that, uh, you know, Chinese schizophrenics are picking the very, very wrong signal in respect to this stuff. And it's all kinds of very, very bad stuff that can happen. There will be people lynched and killed and China is becoming super, super, super empowered in more and taking greater and greater abuse, taking the whole thing further and further and further, uh, is already completely obsessed with the idea about colonialism, about killing others through the chain, literally. I, I, I really, really regret China. It came to me very, very late, this whole thing. Uh, But, you know, uh, you know what, man? Uh, This latest meeting here between uh, Putin, Kim Jong-un, this was, this is just, this was a show of a schizophrenia in Korea. This was a show of of a schizo with uh, uh, people completely uh, taken out like totally crazy about about the evil that is taking place in Ukraine against Ukrainian people I mean totally fucking this stuff here I mean this is just you know the, the, the schizo, the schizo show that goes on, you know, it's, it's, you know, guys, I have to interrupt you. It's not, you're going to end here with this stuff. It's not going to go through this stuff. The world will know about what you are up to. It's not going to go through. Um, you're just talking about the sanctions against China. Uh, well, the thing is, the sanctions are not going to do anything. Either you're going to defend Ukraine uh, on all levels uh, or what's going to happen is, uh, you know, you, you, you have to, uh, you're going to have to proclaim the world as a new form, you know, colonialism as something that is legit, that is legitimate, that is, you know, actual, recognize one as a form of governing in today, at present. You know, Xi Jinping... Uh, not the Xi Jinping, but Kim Jong Un. Yeah, if you go back to to this uh, issue of the Paris and what uh, I will with this little map, I'm gonna zoom here to this uh, issue here in the Asia. Where you have Japan, you have South Korea, you have North Korea, and you have a mighty China here, and uh, uh, Russia. You know, Mongolia is not a threat to anybody, uh, and. What exactly is happening here? Well, you know, in 2009, there was a plan, uh, because of so many threats that Kim Jong, with nuclear weapons and this and that, uh, they came up with on how to take the North Korea down. Uh, The thing, however, is they realized that it's not possible to take the North Korea down. It's not possible to take one down because Kim Jong-un is so armed with a nuclear arsenal that you would have to take 
shit out of him. And taking him out would kill a lot of North Korean people, which absolutely doesn't appeal to me in absolutely any way. And even less, it appealed to the South Koreans. South Koreans didn't like this plan. They didn't like this plan even a little bit because it would kill a lot of North Korean people. A lot of North Korean people would suffer. They would they would decimate one. Uh, they would erase one. They would destroy one without Kim having capacity, power to to shoot nothing anywhere. But the thing is that North Korea would be decimated, possibly, with a lot of North Korean people dead. And then there is this other factor that is right here next door. That's called uh, China. It's called China. And from this lesson here that people in region have took uh, Vietnam, when uh, during the war of the Vietnam, uh, through Hanoi, uh, China played a number one player and empowered Vietnam uh, to the degree that it no longer paid off to to even have war there. Uh, eventually, to win the war in Vietnam, uh, you would eventually have to end up nuking uh, China. They all realized, yeah, because you would not stop the war in 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 a Vietnam unless you would nuke China out of existence, literally. This is just like a harsh, harsh reality. Now, the China is not supplying Russia, so they say, even that there are instances clearly that suggest some other issues, uh, Russia with weapons. But what is happening is a Kim Jong-un show, and the Kim Jong-un supplies Russia with unlimited um, arsenal, basically, with whatever it is that many would consider as inefficient. And, you know, uh, when it comes to inefficiency, I don't know what, what inefficiency is. You know, what makes a fob bomb? Um, you could, as well as mine, take, a, you know, is actually a bomb with attached wings. Uh, this is a FAP bomb. This is what's called a FAP bomb, basically. You know, which a plane would take to a how attitude. You see this here? This is perfect. You could actually take, you could actually take the, the shells. And what you would do is you would take this up on a high altitude with whatever plane, jet you, you're going to use. And then you would squeeze the button and this wings with a little jet in the back would then propel this bomb, otherwise completely useless already from the Soviet times, whatever. It would propel one another 50 kilometers and it would detonate one, this 500 kilos. Classic is a 500 kilos that goes 50 kilometers distance. Then it's 1,500 kilos that goes like 25 uh, or 25 miles actually, which is like fucking distance. Enough distance for uh, air to surface missiles a defense system from Ukrainian size not to reach this high altitude jets that drop these gifts down from the sky. You know what I mean? So now what we are we're witnessing is basically complete demolition, destruction of Ukraine. Those that are willing to go and die on the front lines with literally China directly engaging in a war against people of Ukraine. Right? Are we correct about this issue? We are completely correct. If you want to stop the North Korea with this stuff here, then you would have to deal with a China, yes? You would have to nuke China out of existence, right? Yes or no? So China did not condemn Russia. China did not fly to Ukraine and offer Ukraine a military assistance. China did not uh, position itself against the Russia through their proposition of the so-called peace plan. 
China is actively engaging in a warfare on the people of Ukraine and is doing for all the reasons that I stated. And I'm warning the French politics about these issues as is nowhere as evident as crazy as it is in France when it comes to Europe that it's a politic that goes to nowhere uh, today it's a people of Ukraine it's actually eastern part of France that is on fire tomorrow it's going to be a Baltic states it's going to be somewhere in Africa it's going to be somewhere in other part of the Asia that's going to happen the same thing it's already happening and it's going to go so far and it's going to go so on that's a really really a progress when you consider what used to be Vietnam today China is already taking an active role in a warfare in direct warfare uh, literally on Europe you can call this a communism you can call this in the name of the justice you can call this in the name of whatever the fuck you want uh, but it's time for American and for the European politicians to uh, to come to senses before it's going to be all too late. You, for me, Ukraine is losing the war every fucking day. Every fucking day of the war, Ukraine is losing the war, if you ask me. This is colonialism. What we are witnessing is a pure form of colonialism. This is This is just as colonialistic and it's butcherous. Look how many people are killed throughout Ukraine. Look what you have done to Ukraine. Look what the fuck is going on to Ukraine. You have audacity. You have a face to come to Europe and discuss business deals and discuss even arming Serbia like in the name of something that you are advocating against. I mean, the French politic is in crisis. The French politic always was in crisis. The politicians in the Paris are, uh, they are very, very, very unfit. Uh, they always, in my opinion, were very, very unfit. Not that they would not come to the census, but they had no people that would eventually have a capacity or have a ca ability to put this shit at the proper place. Personally, I would not take stuff. Personally, I would ask these people questions like why the fuck do you support war on France because France is Europe even if France would not be part of the European Union you know that what Putin is doing costs French taxpayers money it costs uh, more than that in many other ways loss of influence loss of a lot of credentials is proving something to France that France even through it was colonial country never was part of it and will continue to owe more and more and more and will have to pay more and more even for the stuff that had nothing to do with it on the other side you're gonna have politic and that are laughing literally you know it doesn't work like this if you don't know your values, if you don't know, if you don't know what you, what, where is your spot under the sun, I don't even know what, you know, where is this whole thing, this picture, this European landscape, the politic, where the hell is this shit taking to? Where the hell is this gonna take? I mean, I gonna take a fucking side on the right side of the story and you're gonna do the stuff or, or what is this gonna be? I mean, because it's a, it's a, the French politic is scattered all over the place and all those locations the French politic is uh, scattered all over the place uh, they uh, they point in this location here and they're not about to get any time better it's gonna get worse China is flooded with the schizophrenics at the top of the political pyramid uh, political sanctions by the way are not gonna stop they're not gonna do anything when it comes to Ukraine, the war will continue to rage, and these people look forward to escalate the war, to make one graver and graver threat. It's actually their diabolical plan to take the whole West down, I think, with it. So maybe it's time 
to make China face own medication. Summon one, ask one about the questions, accuse one, supporting Russia directly in war against Ukraine and have one either face consequences or take the right side of the history. Thank you. I don't have anything else to say about this stuff, but we do have some kind of identity crisis that are really not necessary. There is actually no ne necessity for this type of identity crisis, and this type of identity crisis are going to escalate. They're going to grow and grow and grow and grow, with some people behind these gates in London uh, playing fool out of absolutely everybody uh, till they're going to force, they're going to compel the rest of the world to knee in front of them. And obviously those that are using bricks to get their new type of colonial agenda forward. <laughs>